Welcome to Top 3 with Lestrada Law, where we explore the intersection of the law with your life and business journey. At Lestrada Law, we're committed to changing how you view lawyers and the legal profession. So on this podcast, we'll have real conversations with real people about real things, not just legalese. We'll talk with those who have faced the challenges you're facing so you can learn from their experience. And we'll share three easy to remember takeaways. Yeah, we'll talk about the law, but we'll mostly talk about life and business and how the law overlaps with almost everything that you do. I'm Geneva Vasquez, the owner and principal attorney of Lestrada Law, a law firm focused on serving estate planning and small business planning clients, and I'm your host. As a quick disclaimer, I'm a lawyer, but I'm not your lawyer unless we've entered into a written agreement to work together. I'm licensed in North Carolina, New Mexico, South Carolina, Florida, and New Jersey, and can serve clients in those states. However, nothing said here today is intended to be legal advice, and this information is for educational purposes only. With me today, we have Jack Tompkins of Pineapple Consulting Firm. Welcome, Jack. Hi, thanks for having me, Geneva. I love all your pineapple decor that you have with you and your background and on your shirts. I'm always marketing. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah, I want to give a little intro on who you are. So after years in the corporate world, Jack realized he wasn't making enough impact on individual people. So he took his big business skills and translated them to small businesses and medium-sized businesses. At Pineapple Consulting Firm, he helps businesses extract value from data so their past performance can inform their future strategy. We're excited to have you with us today. Excited to be here. Thanks again for having me. So I just, you know, said value, data, extract, words that are like big and kind of sound expensive, right? Those words sound expensive, uh, especially the word data. So one of the reasons I wanted to have you on was to really talk about what does data mean for small businesses and medium-sized businesses? You know, we live in a a world where people are constantly using that word. And um, I think most of us don't even really know what it means and how it could work for us. So that was part of the reason I thought that um, it'd be great to have you on. But first, I want you to just give a little bit of background about who you are and and, uh, Pineapple Consulting Firm. You've got to tell us how you came up with the name, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm excited to talk data. I know that's a rare thing that people want to hear about, but I promise this will be good. Um, A little bit about me. So I uh, like, like you said, Geneva, in the intro, um, started off in the big business world. So I worked um, for a big insurance company and had a variety of roles there. And I was an analyst in a few different capacities. And I've always had sort of the entrepreneurial bug. So as I was going through those roles, I was like, okay, this is, this is fun. This is fine. Nice, stable job, good people, but it wasn't really what I wanted to do. Um, so I, I kind of thought about the transition of, okay, if I'm good enough at this for a big business, I bet small businesses need pretty much the exact same thing, but they don't have the resources for it. So I decided to kind of, like you said, set off on my own and help those small businesses and give them that big business corporate analyst um, kind of at their disposal so they can get into the data. And so it's less scary. And more importantly, they don't have to deal with it. I'll just deal with it and show them the pretty picture at the end kind of thing. (laughs) Um, So hence pineapple was born and that stemmed from, honestly, I just, I kind of just really like pineapples. That's where the name originated. (laughs) But it's also a sign of like Southern hospitality It's very welcoming. It's like in the South, when you get a new neighbor, you bring them a pineapple and welcome to the neighborhood kind of thing. Um, But really what drove home the name for me was my idea of a vacation uh, is like represented by a pineapple. So it's like drinking a pina colada out of a pineapple on a beach somewhere. And since small business owners never actually get to take that true vacation, if I could in some way save them a time or make them enough money so they could take that vacation where they go enjoy a pineapple drink on a beach, I would absolutely love that. And that's what I'm going for. So that's the goal is to be able to help the small business owner use the data so they can actually take a vacation, right? Exactly. (laughs) Or cut. Like why take the longer road when you could take the shorter road? That's exactly right. Yep. (laughs) Yeah. So it's, it's interesting actually from, you know, your, just your business development story for you personally, because I think a lot of people have that entrepreneurial bug um, and they're stuck in corporate America and they don't know how to get out of it or translate it, you know? And so for you, 
you know, I wasn't planning on talking about this with you, but I think it's an interesting point is you, how did you figure out where you wanted to hone in for your business? Yeah, it's a good question. And I imagine there's a lot of people doing a side hustle. They're thinking about it to your point. They're having that same sort of internal struggle. And I had ideas. So again, back to the entrepreneurial blog, I had ideas of running a restaurant and being a kinesiologist or a physical therapist and all these ideas across the board. But one day it kind of hit me of, here's my skill set. I know what it is. It's, it's the analytics. It's the data, all that fun stuff. Um, I use fun pretty loosely there. <laughs> but I realized that's my skill set. And I figured, why not just run with what I'm good at and combine that with just, I love talking to people and one-on-ones and talking shop kind of thing. So why not just use what I'm good at? And I think that's a good starting place for a lot of side hustlers or um, people who want to be an entrepreneur is just, what are you good at? Is that something that you could actually sell? Is it a, is it a good service that you could provide other people? Did you ease in as a side hustle first before you went fully on your own? I did. Yeah. I was on the side for about a year or so. And then I said, pandemic or not, here I come, I'm going for it. <laughs> well, you know, that's a good point. I think a lot of people, uh, when they're starting businesses, think it has to be just this day where all of a sudden now you start the business. Right. right? And they forget that there are sometimes other options to just dabble right? And, and figure out all the building stuff, you know, having built my own business and built the strata law, you know, it's a lot of work to build a business. Um, even just, you know, things you don't think about, right? Like the, the mailbox and all, you know, all these little things that honestly, it seems so silly to even harp on that, but there's just so many things on that checklist that need to get done. And, you know, a lot of people don't do it because they're afraid of losing the steady paycheck. Right. That's exactly right. And just, Building on the side makes so much sense to just chip away at those little things, building the website, getting the mailbox, like you said, all those little things take so much time. And it's, it, it is kind of like, okay, cool. Now I have an LLC that doesn't mean you're going to be flooded with customers. I mean, if you were, that'd be awesome, but it doesn't mean you have to work 80 hours a day kind of thing. Right. Um, so yeah, building on the side makes a whole lot of sense and just take care of those admin things first. Absolutely. So let's, let's start there because I think, you know, in my firm, um, I work with, I have two sides of my practice, estate planning and small business planning. And for the small business side, I really try to take an educational approach, like an education forward approach and help people, maybe like you were just, you know, a short time ago, who are really at the ground floor of figuring out where they're going to go with their business and really teach them how to get that strong legal foundation in place from day one right? Because what a lot of people don't know is how important, you know, not just having the LLC is, but why do you need it? And how do you maintain it? That's really the most important part. And so I can help people get that all set up and keep it intact, right? So they can grow the business long term. But when I do that, one of the things that I start with is this, it's kind of a strategy session. And I give, you know, a questionnaire that we start with. And one of the first topics we cover are future plans right? Revenue models. Where are you going? I want to know, maybe you don't ever want to be more than a solo or a side hustler and that's totally fine. But the question is, what are your plans for how you see this progressing? Right. And m most people don't think about that from, from day one. And that's where I think that you could really add a lot of insight for us is because when we're talking about growth, whether that's just growth in getting more efficient in your business, right? Because that still is growing it. You can serve maybe a higher capacity of people or produce a higher number of things. Um, or whether it's actually growing the business to something that's a huge team or you know a multi-million dollar company. Um, data is part of all of that, right? And a lot of business owners don't realize it. So I want you to speak to that person. Speak to the, the person who's thinking of a business, who just started a business or who's a side hustler. And let's talk about data in that context. So what is, you know, square one, like what does data look like for somebody who's truly that small? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And I think a lot of people do struggle with it too. Um, data, it's, it's not just for the Fortune 500, right? Kind of like you were saying, it's people don't necessarily think about their long-term goals at the start because it's, oh crap, like I need a website first. Mm -hmm. um, but it's important to have that at least in the back of your mind. And 
you don't need a full fledged data warehouse with all this fancy stuff and coding data for a lot of small businesses and side hustles is really just like looking at your financials or your marketing data. Something as simple as that, you know, you have it somewhere, right? Maybe it's in QuickBooks or wherever. Um, and it's really just, um, it's it, the, the whole data stigma. It's, it's not artificial intelligence when you're in a small business, right? It's, it's looking at what was my revenue last month and was that good? Was that bad? Where did it come from? Things like that. It doesn't have to be this massive time consuming week long project. It can just be as simple as check out QuickBooks and Oh, cool. I got somebody referred me, Geneva referred me to somebody and now I got business from them. Maybe I'll explore trying to get more referrals from Geneva or whatever it is. And that's the kind of small business data that most people have in some capacity and can really mean a lot. And you don't need a whole lot of it. You don't need crazy systems. It's just a, it's a really great starting point that can have long-term effects. So, so many people use CRMs now and things like that. And it's easier for us to, um, track, you know, maybe where our referrals or our lead sources come from. So if somebody is, you know, let's, let's give a real example. Like I think the example that you use is really good. So if you're going back, how, how would you say from a practical perspective, how would you advise somebody to take, you know, maybe what is they know in their QuickBooks as all their sales for the month or the revenue they produce for the month and, and use the lead source from it to make it usable. How, what, what are some things that they should think about? Yeah, it's a, it's a really good question. I love that you brought in the CRM to it too. Um, because one of the things that I focus on when I help small businesses is where did that revenue come from? Is that good? Is that bad? Do you want to do more of it? Do you want to do less of it kind of thing? So if you marry up the QuickBooks data with the CRM data, you've got, okay, I brought in a thousand dollars last month and I made 10 new contacts and one of them gave me business. Cool. That's, that is plenty of data to make something out of because you can think, okay, that one customer, did I get that from reaching out on LinkedIn? Did I get it from a Facebook ad? Where did that customer come from? And is that what I'm looking for? Do I want to get customers that way? Um, you could go, okay, they only gave me a thousand dollars. I really wanted $5,000. Um, but maybe however they came in, uh, it was under the assumption that they just wanted this tiny little project, or maybe it's, maybe it's a good surprise. And they gave you 5,000 when you were expecting 1,000. Is that something you could leverage going forward? Um, maybe if they came in from a Facebook ad, then whatever ad you displayed gives off the impression of, Hey, here's this awesome product or service that we have and people are willing to pay that much. So literally just burying up that QuickBooks and the CRM data you can get a lot of good insight from as simple as one customer and just diving deep into it. Right. So I guess, you know, I'm, I mean, lawyers know this probably better than anybody. Not all clients are good clients. right? <laughs> <laughs> and so, and sometimes, sometimes that doesn't necessarily mean that that client is a bad person, but it might just mean that they're not the right fit for you to serve uh, based on what they need and based on what you can offer. And I'm a big advocate for um, the fact that we don't all have to be good at everything, right? And we, we can hone in our skill set and where we can't serve somebody, find somebody that can, you know, serve that client. So I think that's a good example because you can use that data to distill the bad clients too. It's not just about chasing more, right? It's like if you ran a Facebook ad and you result, you know, you got five new leads from them, but none of them were fitting the type of client you want to serve, you know, now that that's not a good ad to run. Right. And that's, that's data. Right. That's exactly right. That's a perfect example. Um, I heard somebody say once uh, that you're not a true consultant until you fired a client, mm -hmm. which is very similar to what you're saying. It's if you're not getting the clients that you want, then they're coming to you somehow. Is it what you're saying? Is it just something on your website, whatever it is, that is absolutely data. Yeah. And that's something that you can even anecdotally think about. And to your point, these five clients came in and they were not good, whatever it is, that's data that you can use and steer your marketing in a different direction. So um, now to that point, I think, you know, budget is always a concern 
for everybody, especially new business owners, right? And how can you build this out on a shoestring, basically? How can you start to collect data and build something out that's useful for you, that's really budget friendly, if not, you know, completely free? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, my immediate answer is Excel is my best friend. It can be every business owner's best friend. Um, but I'll go a little bit broader to start. So if, if you have something like QuickBooks, um, which a lot of folks start off with, it's whatever it is, 20, 30 bucks a month. Um, and you have a CRM, a lot of those are free. If you just put those together, if you like Excel, great. Dump them both into Excel. Most things can go into that. And you can kind of line up, okay, customer A was however many dollars and customer A came from this, whatever it is. Super cheap and easy. You already have Excel on your computer. That's probably my number one way is just get it into the same place. And you don't have to build out some fancy dashboard, um, but you can just look at it and, and compare the two sources. Another way I would say is you're able to put in, in a lot of CRMs, you're able to put in uh, like a deal amount or, or whatever it's called, depending on what CRM you use. But you could say customer A had a deal of $1,000. You can just put that right in the same spot so you don't have to go into Excel. Um, that's another really easy way and very common way that is going to cost you zero additional dollars. We can kind of chart out that same thing that we were going through. Yeah. I, I mean, I know part of the system that I use is it collects more data than I even know how to use, honestly. Um, and I'm sure that that's the case for a lot of people. So if, what does it take to kind of get something like that set up? to where it's a little bit more of an automated process if you're somebody that doesn't want to do a lot of manual data entry every month. Right. Yeah. And who wants to do that? Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> right. Um, to automate that, I would say it'll normally require like an initial time investment, just time, not necessarily money, but sort of building that process out of going down the CRM example, we put in the deal amount or whatever. If you build out um, that like that deal amount is in your front page or whatever your initial screen is kind of thing. You can see the new customers, you can see the deal amounts and every CRM is going to be different. If you go the Excel way, you just dump it all into Excel and then you can build out basically a template that'll just take the data in whatever form you normally download it in. And then you put it into a pivot table, or if that's not something that you're comfortable with, then you put it into just like a nice little summary. Um, so the, the long and short of it is it's going to depend a little bit, but the constant theme of it is you need to put in that little bit of time investment. That's going to save you hours on end every month, instead of doing the manual copying pasting that everybody hates. So building out, you know, that one Excel spreadsheet that knows how to to do this for you could be key, right? And I mean, if you're like me, you're not <laughs> great with all the Excel formulas. I, I don't like to share this information with a lot of people, but um, the only class that I ever had to repeat in my life was uh, MIS. <laughs> I didn't fail it, but I didn't get a high enough passing grade for my degree. So um, that uh, some people are like me and just have a block with some things Excel. And um, so if somebody is like that, is that where you come in? That's a great way where I, or a great spot for me to come in. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I love having all small businesses and my success story along those lines is I worked with a guy who um, ran an insurance agency and he would take at least a day every month and he would manually copy and paste things. And we've all been there. It's you copy it from one sheet, you go into another sheet and he created this like scratch work summary that really didn't tell him exactly what he was looking for. It got the job done, but he knew there could be more to it. So it took him, like I said, over a day, call it eight hours. Um, I built him something for, I think it was like $200 or something like that. Uh, it now takes him five minutes and he literally just presses a button and it's all right in front of him. So it was already data he was using in his business. He just what, and he knew there was value in the data, right? He was getting something out of it. That's why he was spending all this time every month. And for a relatively, you know, small investment, now he saved himself 
out, probably hundreds of hours over the course of the year. That's exactly right. Yep. So that that's a good example of, you know, and, and he probably wasn't a, a new business. He's an existing business that had, you know, a, a good amount of data to use. So right. if you start really from the ground up, it's a lot easier to, to build it, you know, now in the beginning versus moving everything to that after the fact. That's exactly right. Yeah. You could even start that process on your own. If you hate Excel, again, you could, you could do other things, but you start it with one client and you make that summary, you put into whatever you're comfortable with. And that process starts to build over time. And as you get more clients, things will jump out to you of, oh, I can make this a little bit quicker if I do this. And it doesn't have to be formula based, doesn't have to be anything like that. Um, it's just getting that process started. Things are going to come along the way that's going to make you think, oh, this could be so much better. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, even starting with just one easy client and then saving yourself the time a year, two years, three years from now, um, after you're like a more established business, that would take a bigger investment. If, he, if they have all sorts of data all over the place and no system at all, that's where you're going to end up spending a decent amount of money. You start from the beginning, nice, easy. At most, you're going to spend a couple hundred dollars kind of thing. And that's what I like to talk about in a legal context too, because, you know, so often people do not spend the time or the money investment to set things up correctly in the beginning. And it is always way more expensive and way more time consuming to fix a problem after the fact, you know, once the problem has really developed. And I mean, as a business owner, you're never going to be slower than when day one of opening the doors. Right. right? Hopefully. I mean, that's yeah. cool, right. So there's no time like the beginning to just get it set up correctly. Right. <laughs> um, so that's, I wanted to ask you a little bit about Google, for example. So, you know, you're, you're mentioning Excel and I mean, more and more, I think people are transitioning to using a lot of uh, Google Docs and Google Sheets and all of that. Can you do a lot of that same work in the Google platform? Yeah, it is. It is very similar. Google's actually done a really good job with it. Um, it's definitely not exactly the same. That's no secret, but you can do a whole lot of the same functionality. Um, and Google Sheets, for example, sticking with the Excel theme, has a lot more flexibility in terms of sharing. Like if you have a business partner or an employee or, you know, your 15 year old nephew that's doing the books for you or like whatever it is, um, that's a really nice and easy thing to just share across whoever has a Gmail basically. Right. And it's a hundred percent free. Exactly. You don't even have to pay for Microsoft. That's exactly so right. I think it's, that's another option that, you know, you can start to collect some of that with literally no investment besides creating a, a Gmail account, which probably almost everybody has anyways. Exactly. Yeah. Nice and easy. So I want to move to your top three. Mm -hmm. Um, and for you, I mean, we've talked a lot about this, you know, throughout the course of this conversation, but I want to distill it down. So for small business owners who don't realize how they can be collecting or using data to improve their business, what are your top three takeaways that you want those small business owners to know about data? Yeah. Number one, I think kind of nip it in the bud data. We got to remove the stigma a little bit for small businesses. It's not artificial intelligence. It's not just for the Facebooks and the Netflixes and the Googles, you can start with very little data. So small business, you can make a whole lot of use out of any amount of data. So that's number one. Number two really carries off that. There's no such thing as too little data. Um, and these two are intentionally overlapping a bit, but like we were saying earlier, if you have one client, you can use that. That's a data point and it's a really good data point because you got business out of it. Where do they come from? Was that good? Was that bad? Did they get the services that they were looking for? Um, so it's, I'll, I'll even echo the first point there. You don't need a data warehouse. You don't need to be Google. If you have a tiny bit of data in QuickBooks, in a CRM, in whatever it is, you can make some sense out of that and start making some data-driven decisions right from the get-go. And then number three is data is an asset. It shouldn't be an annoyance. And I know that switch has to flip for a lot of people, especially to your point earlier, when you're just starting out and you're, you're figuring out how to set up your company email or whatever it is. Um, 
data can be thought of as annoyance because it's uh, like, I'll, I'll deal with that later. Mm -hmm. Also to your point earlier, you're never going to be, um, or maybe we'll say never have as much free time maybe, um, as you do on day one. So getting that process started to treat data as an asset is huge. It's huge. It's going to pay off dividends and dividends forever. If you just treat it as, okay, I'm going to use this to help influence my decisions, marketing decisions, sales decisions, whatever it is. If you start using it from the beginning, you build that habit, you get that process to actually look at it and it doesn't become an annoyance. It becomes really like a business partner and something that you can really draw from. So the quick recap, all somewhat overlapping. Data is not just for the Fortune 500 because there's no such thing as too little data, point number two. And then point number three, data is your friend. Data should be an asset, not an annoyance. That's good. That's a good top three. I And that's easy to remember. You know, it's, I try to talk about the same thing with the words estate planning, you know, or business planning. People think that it, it has to cost a, um, you have to be a millionaire. You have to, you know, it costs a million dollars to do that kind of work. And uh, that's not always the case, right? And so for, I think removing the stigma is probably one of the most important takeaways that business owners or side hustlers or solopreneurs can can really, for me, that's one of my favorite things that you say, because um, even myself, you know, when you hear this word data, you think of big data, but you have to think about how you distill it down and make it useful for yourself. So that's really good points, really good points. You know, I'm going to kind of throw you on a, a loop because I know we had kind of talked about where we were going to go with the direction of this conversation, but I'm, I'm curious, you know, if you were to say just a couple of things, for somebody to start collecting data on just like two or three things that they could do that would potentially make a big difference in their business. Where would you focus those areas? It's a good question. I think I would start off with making sure the money is captured somewhere. And the default example is putting everything into QuickBooks. Um, but having that in one place is, is huge and just keeping an eye on it. Number two is, I would say to your point earlier, the CRM, um, who's paying you? Where are the leads coming from? Things like that. Because mm -hmm. every small business, every side hustle that's starting needs some level of marketing to get out there. And that could just be referrals. And that could be your number one source of clients, contacts, leads, everything. But it's really, really important to keep an eye on that. Right. Um, and the last thing I would say is this is something we haven't brought up yet, but Google Analytics is free to set up and it tells you about your website. So everybody's got a website now. Um, you, it, I mean, it's table stakes to start a business and you may not get a whole lot of leads from your website, but you can see where people are going. And if people are starting off on your homepage, that's great. Make sure your homepage looks great. It probably does. And then they go to the FAQ section. Um, you might think that everybody would naturally go to the about me section or whatever it is. Um, you get to actually see that in Google analytics, which again is totally free to set up and they create a dashboard for you and it is customized to you. Um, and it's a pretty, it's a pretty user friendly interface as well. I would definitely say QuickBooks or some money keeping track uh, system clear. Number one, uh, customer relationship management, CRM is a clear number two. And then I'd probably put something like Google Analytics for your website is somewhere in the three range. You know, you bring up a good point. I mean, I was shocked when I opened the firm how much free data you get about everything you're doing. If you have a Facebook business page, there's a ton of data that you're getting from that. You know, how what your reach is, who's clicking, where they're clicking, where they're from, right? If, same on, you know, Instagram, same on um, it's even if you use, uh, like an email newsletter, right? Like uh, MailChimp, you can see exactly what links people are clicking on, what time of day they're opening the email, all of these things that can help guide your decisions. I mean, if you're sending your email at eight o'clock at night, no one's opening it, you know, you should probably send it at a different time. Right. right. And that's a simple example of using that data that they're compiling for you. You don't even have to do anything to alter the course of your decision in your business. That's exactly right. And that's, that's such a good piece of small business data right there is the eight o'clock at night email <laughs> because you have a day job and you're doing it as a side hustle, you send it out at night, which makes sense. 
Nobody opens it at eight o'clock at night though. And that's data for small business. That's how you make decisions. Yep. Well, this has been really helpful and I hope informative for some of our listeners. So if any of our listeners, listeners are business owners, or maybe just want to know a little bit more about you and your work, how can they get in touch with you? LinkedIn is, is great for me. I'm on that several times a day, every day. Um, and then my website has a whole lot of info and some videos. You get to see me probably in this shirt with a pineapple in the background and most of them. Um, and that's pineapple CF as in consulting firm.com. Okay. And we'll of course, uh, link your, your site with the notes of the show. And, um, and then of course they can reach out to you on LinkedIn as well. Yeah. Um, well, thanks so much for spending time with us today. I really appreciated this conversation is educational and it's got my brain going too on other things that I can be collecting in my business. So um, we can always be improving to grow and get better and more efficient. So really good information. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me. And this is, this is a whole lot of fun. And now you got my wheels spinning about estate planning and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much for tuning into this episode of top three with Estrada Law. And thanks to our guest, Jack Tompkins with Pineapple Consulting Firm for sharing his top three takeaways about data for small business. Be sure to tune in to the next episode of Top Three with Estrada Law. We release new episodes bi-weekly and you can catch all the other shows on the Sally Boys Podcast Network wherever you subscribe to your podcast. Subscribe to Sally Boys Podcast Network to get all of the latest episodes or you can follow us on YouTube. To find out more about Estrada Law and our small business planning and estate planning services, you can visit us at www.lestradalaw.com Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or Twitter. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.